English is the most widely spoken language in the world. Several countries have it as their official primary language and several more have it as an official alternate language. More people choose as a second language to learn English than any other language. And yet, English is hard. Our vocabulary and our spelling is confusing. Consider the bandage was wound around the wound, or the farm could produce produce, or the soldier decided to desert his desert in the desert. And since there's no time like the present, he decided to present the present. English has the most words of any language in the world. Some people would say Arabic. Well, why do we need more words than other people? How did this happen? Well, it's all about history. English began as a German language. Our most basic words are still German. Consider how familiar these German words are. Haar, Nase, Lippe, Kin, Schulte, Arm, Elbogen. Hand, Finger, Knie und Fuß. And the family names, Vater, Mutter, Sohn, Tochter, Brüder, Schwester, as well as Hund und Katze. So our colors as well remain similar to German. These are our most basic, simple words. Three groups of Germans migrated to Britain between 1550 and the 700s. That would be the Jutes, the Angles, and the Saxons. And they began to be called the Anglo-Saxons. The Jutes didn't get in there. They should sue. The Anglo-Saxon invaders pushed out the natives, called Celts, to Wales, Scotland, Cornwall, and Ireland. And then this happened. Between 793 and 1000, the Vikings, or Norsemen, invaded England. They set up their own kingdom, which eventually merged with the Anglo-Saxon. They brought many new words to the English language including almost every English word beginning with S-K sound. Something very nice resulted from this invasion. Most Europeans have languages that have genders for their words. Their words are either male, female, or neuter, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The vocabularies of the Anglo-Saxons and the Viking Norse were close enough that they could usually make out what each other were saying, but the genders they had for words were different in each language, so they just dropped them. And that's why English today doesn't have gendered words like Spanish, French, and German. And then this happened. In 1066, the greatest change of all came to the English language. The French Normans invaded, overthrew the Anglo-Saxon king, and took over all of England. The conquered Anglo-Saxons became the peasants, and the French Normans became the lords and the ladies. Thousands of French words entered the English language. This resulted in many of the nearly duplicate words we have now. For example, the Anglo-Saxons who raised the food used one set of words, and the French Normans who ate the food used another set. So we have cow and beef, pig and pork, deer and venison, calf and veal, chicken and poultry, sheep and mutton. And we still use both sets of words today. Because of the Norman-French invasion, English today remains filled with synonyms because we have some words from Anglo-Saxon and we have some words from the Old French and we kept them both. Graveyard and cemetery. Why do we need them both? Lawyer and attorney. Hearsay and rumor. 
belongings and property, midday and noon, answer and reply, belief and faith, wed and marry, deadly and lethal, end and finish, ghost and spirit, fire and flame. Like, how why do we need all of this duplication? Who is going to do something about this? Who is going to be held responsible? Why do we need to learn so many words? All of the English spoken before the invasion of the Norman French was called Anglo-Saxon or Old English. And this is the Lord's Prayer in that language. All the English spoken after the invasion of the Norman French was called Middle English. And here's an example of that. Although Middle English is still somewhat difficult to read for modern readers, it is clear that it's much closer to modern English than Anglo-Saxon is. Many of the letters on Anglo-Saxon are not even used anymore. Old English had given us Beowulf, and Middle English gave us Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer and Sir Gawain and the Green Knight by the unknown poet we call the Pearl Poet. Henry VIII transformed the power structure of the English society when he cut England off from the Catholic Church in Rome. The conflict between Henry VIII and the Roman Catholic Church eventually led to the seizure of over 800 monasteries, many of which were demolished or burned. One of the saddest legacies of the disillusion was the destruction of the monastic libraries and their precious illuminated manuscripts. Very few Old English documents survived. Beowulf was an exception. Now, at this time, almost nothing was written in English. The Oxford Library in 1605 held 6,000 volumes, but only 60 of them were in English. Anyone who was educated at all wrote in Latin, which brought to the English language words from Latin. We have agriculture, language, justice, science, forum, circus, opium, dominatrix, religion, apostle, city, master, paper. Most words in science are from Latin. Many words in the medical field are also Latin, although some of them are Greek. Martin Luther in Germany broke the ice by translating the Bible into German. Then he began urging people to write in their own languages rather than in Latin. He thought that the reason that people looked down on national languages is that everything good was still being written in Latin. If people had quality reading in their own language, scholars would respect those languages too. The 16th century was the great age of the arrival of ancient texts in English, from Douglas's Aeneid through Golding's Ovid to Norse Plutarch, Chapman's Homer, Holland's Livy. The aim was not just to make the classical text available, it's also to demonstrate that English can be noble enough and flexible enough to carry the freight. The translators were reading for and helping to make an English that was noble. They were demonstrating consciously and carefully what English could do. In addition to these translators from Latin, William Tyndale translated the Bible into English in 1526. These translators received praise and lasting fame for their work. Tyndale was strangled and then burnt. Finally, in 1611, King James allowed commoners to read the Bible. The translation is still considered a masterpiece of English in the common tongue. Most of it was Tyndale's translation. And then this happened, William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was known for plays like Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth, Much Ado About Nothing, Julius Caesar. But did you also know he added dozens of words to the English language? 
And he also added common phrases that you may have heard. But the language wasn't done growing yet. Through the work of artists, the language continued to grow. Then this happened. The British decided to have an empire. Look, new words coming. The languages of India gave us avatar, bandana, babble, bangle, brouhaha, bungalow, candy, cot, gym, juggernaut, jungle, khaki, loot, maven, pajamas, pundit, shampoo, and veranda. Sub-Saharan languages gave us goober, gumbo, jumbo, mamba, okay, and zombie. Languages of North America gave us barbecue, bayou, papoose, powwow, tomahawk, and kayak. The Boers gave us trek, and the South Pacificers gave us taboo. While the British were in India, some scholars fell in love with Indian languages, like Sir William Jones. This particular gent couldn't help notice that they were a lot like European languages, much more so than Chinese or North American languages. Pater is much like father or pater in Latin. Brata is like brother. Pada is pedestrian or foot. Naman is much like name. And people began to understand that all these people, all these different languages had the same ancestry. You could look at it this way. In Europe, we have Latin languages, German languages, and Slavic languages. Latin languages include Portuguese, Spanish, French, Italian, and Romanian. German languages include Dutch, German, Scandinavian languages, and English. The Slavic would include Bulgarian and Ukrainian, Polish, and Russian. Some people prefer to look at it as a chart the Centum and Satum languages, the two different groups, as each tribe wandered farther and farther apart from each other, their languages slowly grew different until they split up and then they split up again, and in some cases split up yet again. Some people like to draw it in these fancy trees. And it's still going on. In the United States, different dialects are already forming. As you can see by this word we use for soft drink. Is it pop, Coke, soda, or something else? 